God has given human beings incredible human potential. Humanity's creative imagination and intelligence have led to amazing inventions. The human mind has invented supercomputers, designed and built record-setting skyscrapers, planned and established effective transportation systems, passenger airplanes traveling halfway around the world, high-speed trains and inner-city subways, cars and trucks by the millions, super tankers and huge container ships sailing across vast oceans. Where will it all end? Will mankind's inventions and science bring utopia to the 21st century or to the 22nd century? Or will human beings bring upon us all ultimate disaster and destruction? Beyond the current and future conflicts and wars, my friends, there is hope. Your Bible reveals glorious futures, but will that future be governed by selfish, warring governments and nations? On the one hand, we enjoy the benefits of modern technology, but on the other hand, we face weapons of mass destruction. Not only did atomic bombs destroy the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan, but military inventors have exploded hydrogen bombs, 500 times more powerful than atomic bombs. Concerned scientists have warned of the CRBNE weapons of mass destruction, chemical, radiological, biological, nuclear, and enhanced explosive weapons. These weapons could destroy all life on Earth. Will humanity even survive the 21st century? My friends, in spite of the dangers that lie ahead of us, God Almighty promises a glorious, peaceful world ahead, tomorrow's world. Your Bible describes the time when the King of Kings and Prince of Peace, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, will return to save mankind from cosmicide, and He will rule all nations. Will you be alive to enjoy the coming Kingdom of God on earth? Will you experience a glorious future beyond your lifetime? What happens after you die? Will you and all mankind experience oblivion or a magnificent future here on earth? My friends, you need to know your glorious destiny beyond death. Stay tuned. Greetings to all our friends around the world. Every human being who has ever lived has had God-given potential for success in life and abundant living. In the last 100 years of human history, we've seen a global explosion and expansion of incredible modern technology. God has given human beings mind power to explore the inner workings of molecular and atomic structures, and human beings have been able to explore, to a limited extent, the vast reaches of the universe. The Hubble telescope has revealed incredible galaxies far out in the universe. These celestial bodies fascinate human beings. Picture the glorious universe. Mankind would love to travel to the far reaches of its galaxies. Why are we privileged to see such an awesome universe and yet know that it is far beyond our human limitations to actually travel to them? Could it be that there is a purpose for the universe? A magnificent purpose, unknown and unaccepted by scientists, atheists, and even professing Christians? Will you be able to visit these far-flung celestial bodies in the future? Will you even live beyond the grave? Your Bible reveals a glorious future beyond the grave, 
and a glorious future for every human being who chooses the true way of life over the world's way of death. You need to know your ultimate glorious destiny. You need to know your magnificent future beyond death. On today's program, we'll explore the Bible to discover the amazing prophesied future and your promised ultimate destiny. We'll discuss the incredible human potential that lies beyond death and reveal the Bible's description of your awesome future. The world's many religions teach a variety of future destinies. Some envision nothingness forever. Others view a destiny of floating on clouds with nothing to do for eternity. Some teach an endless cycle of reincarnation in various life forms from insects to elephants. Others see an endless torment in an ever-burning fiery hell. What is the truth? What does your Bible teach? First of all, let's realize that God Almighty rules supreme. He is all-powerful, omnipotent, as it tells us in Revelation 19, verse 6. God has promised that His kingdom will rule the earth for a thousand years, and those who are faithful Christians will rule with the Prince of Peace. Let's read that in Revelation, the 20th chapter. If you have your Bible, turn to Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection, over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with Him a thousand years. Yes, genuine Christians who experience the first resurrection from the dead will rule with Christ for a thousand years. My friends, we've been preaching the good news of God's coming kingdom now for decades. You need to prove to yourself that God's world-ruling government under the rulership of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, will come to this earth for many of you in your lifetime. You need to believe your own Bible. Listen to this awesome announcement. Most professing Christians are familiar with Handel's Oratorio, the Messiah. Revelation 11, verse 15 is one of the most inspiring announcements in that classic oratorio. Let's read that in Revelation 11, verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Now where will resurrected Christians rule with Christ? Will they roll around heaven all day, as an old popular song asserts? Listen to this good news in Revelation 5, Verse 9, here the encouraging song of the saints reminds us of the forgiveness of sin we all can have through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And it also affirms the location of Christ's kingdom and rulership of the saints. Revelation 5, verse 9, And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God. Listen to this. And we shall reign on the earth. Yes, God reveals the governmental structure of His coming kingdom. Did you know that the Bible reveals the offices that certain Bible heroes will hold when they are resurrected to rule with Christ? One such example is found in Ezekiel 37, which describes a time when the separated houses of Israel and Judah will be reunited following the return of Jesus Christ. David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. Then they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt. Here we are told not only who will be reigning with Christ, but also reminded where that reign will take place. David will reign in the land given to Jacob in the Middle East, here on earth. My friends, were you ever taught that your ultimate destiny included such a magnificent calling? A calling to rule on earth assisting Jesus Christ as kings and priests? Why haven't you heard that? Almighty God has planned so much more glory in your future than you can imagine. As you read your Bible, you'll see an awesome destiny God has planned for you. 
Read the parable of the pounds or the minas, for example, in Luke 19. For those Christians who grow and overcome, God will give varying responsibilities in the coming kingdom. To the one faithful servant who multiplied his mina ten times, he states, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. That's in Luke 19, verse 17. Another servant multiplied his mina five times, Luke 19, verse 18. And the second came, saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, You also be over five cities. My friends, God has called you to fulfill your incredible human potential. He has called you to grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ and to train His kings and priests for His coming kingdom. That is just part of your glorious destiny beyond death. My friends, God has given human beings incredible mind power. On the one hand, the impressive skyscrapers, modern infrastructure and technology demonstrate our amazing potential. On the other hand, human nature has continued to use science and technology for destructive purposes. That trend, if continued, would destroy all life on earth, as Jesus explained in Matthew 24, verses 21 and 22. Thank God that He has a plan to save mankind from total cosmicide. I think that most of you realize that we are headed toward World War III and Armageddon because we as nations and individuals refuse to change our sinful way of life. Beyond Armageddon, God has promised a new age to come. That new age will begin with the return of Jesus Christ to this earth and the establishment of His kingdom over all nations. My friends, faithful Christians, and that could include you, will inherit that kingdom. The prophet Daniel also confirms that promise, Daniel 7 and verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. What else will we inherit? Matthew 5 tells us, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Yes, faithful Christians, God's children, will inherit the earth. My friends, one of the most encouraging truths of your Bible is that God is producing a family. God is the Father from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, as it tells us in Ephesians 3, verse 15. Listen, God wants you to voluntarily choose to become His son or His daughter. Notice 2 Corinthians chapter 6. God wants all of us to come out of the carnal, sinful ways of the world. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. Listen to this. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. God wants you as His son or daughter. Remember what Jesus taught us to pray in the outline or model prayer in Matthew 6, verse 9. How do you begin your prayer? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. But how do you become a spiritual son or daughter of your Father in heaven? This is important. We must first acknowledge God Almighty as the Creator of heaven and earth. Notice this in Hebrews chapter 11, the well-known faith chapter. Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. But there's another important step that Jesus made clear when He preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. Notice that in Mark 1 and verse 14. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Yes, my friends, Jesus called all His audience to repentance. What do you repent of? You repent of sin, which is the transgression of God's law, the transgression of His Ten Commandments. Repent means to change your mind, to express so much sorrow for your sins, your behaviors, and your selfish attitudes 
that you turn your life around and go God's way rather than the carnal way of selfishness, greed, lust, jealousy, and sin. Remember when the New Testament church began on the day of Pentecost, the Apostle Peter gave instruction to his audience. Acts 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. If you would like to discover more about how this topic impacts your life, visit us online at www.lcgcanada.org to read our featured literature free of charge. My friends, if you've deeply repented of your sins, and if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your living Savior, you need to be baptized. Now is the time to seek God, as it tells us in Isaiah 55, verses 6 and 7. God will abundantly pardon as He promises if you follow through with Christ's instructions and the Apostle Peter's instructions. After genuine repentance, faith, and baptism, God gives the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is the beginning of a truly spiritual life. Once you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you become a begotten child of God. My friends, there is no more awesome blessing in life than to become God's begotten son or daughter. God gives His children awesome promises, benefits, and blessings. Notice this in Romans, the 8th chapter. We become the very heirs of God, co-heirs or joint heirs with Christ. Read it for yourself in Romans 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, or sonship, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Let's understand, we are now heirs of God, not yet inheritors. Our inheritance takes place at the resurrection. Once we are God's begotten children, we need to grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ, as it tells us in 2 Peter 3, verse 18. As we learn and practice God's way of life, we grow in godly character, and that takes a lifetime. This point reveals the rationale behind tests, trials, and requirement to overcome. Dr. Roderick C. Meredith explains this in his booklet, Your Ultimate Destiny. Quote, Why do we go through trials? Why are we tested time and again? God wants to see if we are willing to totally surrender to Him. His ultimate purpose is to reproduce in us His mind, His love, and His character. God is reproducing Himself. My friends, what happens when you die? We've covered that subject in previous programs. Many Christian denominations teach that your soul either goes to a blissful heaven at death or to a fiery hell or purgatory. But what does the Bible actually teach? The Bible teaches that there is a human spirit, not an immortal soul. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11 clearly shows a difference between the human spirit and the spirit of God and reveals that we cannot understand the things of God without His spirit. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Job 32 verse 8 confirms that there is a spirit in man. But there is a spirit in man. And the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. However, the Spirit is not the equivalent of an immortal soul, as the Bible teaches that the soul can die. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4 and verse 20 state, The soul who sins shall die. And Jesus stated this in Matthew 10, verse 28. Look it up in your own Bible. But rather fear Him, that is God, 
who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell, or Gehenna fire. The Bible teaches that souls are mortal, not immortal, and that souls can be totally destroyed in fire. Jesus said so. The incorrigibly wicked indeed will be tormented and then burned up in a lake of fire. That's called the second death, as you read in Revelation 20, verse 14. The second death is final. It's a death from which there's no resurrection. You certainly do not want to be thrown into a lake of fire. You need to choose life and choose the salvation that God offers you through Jesus Christ. As we mentioned earlier, you need to repent and be baptized as the Apostle Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. You can read that in Acts 2 verse 38. My friends, we look forward to the resurrection when Christ returns. If you have your Bible, turn to 1 Corinthians 15 verse 50. 1 Corinthians 15 is called the resurrection chapter, along with 1 Thessalonians 4. Let's read 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal, which all of us are, my friends, has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. On today's program, we've seen that the world's view of the future is very limited. But God is love, and He's creating a loving family of spiritual children. After genuine repentance and baptism, God gives the repentant sinner the gift of His Holy Spirit. That person has now become a begotten child of God. After a lifetime of spiritual growth, a faithful Christian dies in the faith. Notice this commendation of faithful servants in Hebrews 11, verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind the country from which they had come out, they would have opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Those who died in the faith are resting in their graves, awaiting the resurrection. All Christians look forward to the resurrection because they know that Christ Himself was resurrected from the dead after three days and three nights in the tomb, or the heart of the earth, as it tells us in Matthew 12, verse 40. Notice this is an important point. Christ was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness. How? By the resurrection from the dead. And Romans 8, verse 29 tells us that Christ is the firstborn among many brethren. Yes, my friends, faithful Christians will be born again by the resurrection from the dead. We will be God's glorified children. We will inherit glory and immortality. We will no longer be heirs, but inheritors of the kingdom, the earth, and eternal life. But there's more. Turn in your Bible to Revelation 21, verse 4. Ultimately, the new Jerusalem will come down to earth from heaven as you read in the first three verses. And then verse 4, And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. What a glorious future lies ahead for all those who respond to God's calling. Death is an enemy, but that enemy will be conquered. God will give His glorified children 
the awesome inheritance of eternal life and further the whole universe. Revelation 21, verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. My friends, our destiny is glorious. As spirit beings, we will not be limited by time and space. We'll be able to travel to the most distant galaxies. This is the time when Hebrews 2, verse 8 will come to pass. For in putting all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. My friends, thank God for the glorious destiny he's planned for you beyond your death. Pray for God's kingdom to come to this earth and rejoice in God's personal love for you. Be sure to visit us online at the website that will be shown momentarily to read our inspiring free booklet, Your Ultimate Destiny, to learn more about your glorious future. And be sure to join us every week on Tomorrow's World. Gerald Weston and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ and the exciting end-time prophecies and their meaning. So be sure to join us again next week right here at this same time. If you would like to discover more about how this topic impacts your life, visit us online at www.lcgcanada.org to read our featured literature free of charge. The preceding program has been produced by the Living Church of God.